Hi everyone, I'm Emily Zavala, a customer engineer at Google Cloud. Welcome back to the technical series for startups, where we are creating a series of videos for technical enablement to help startups start, build, and grow their businesses successfully and sustainably on Google Cloud. In our previous video, we learned how to use BigQuery for our data analysis needs. And today, we will learn about Dataproc and how we can use it to run Spark and Hadoop jobs faster. Today, we will be covering what is Dataproc, Google Dataproc Vision, on-premises deployments versus Dataproc deployments, serverless Spark, we will walk you through a Dataproc demo, we will also review some sample architecture, and lastly, we will learn about one of our customers and their Dataproc journey. What is Dataproc? At Google Cloud, we have long focused on enabling customers to modernize their open source deployments with Dataproc, our managed open source data analytics product. As we have been on this journey over the past five years, we have learned a lot from helping customers migrate some of the largest Hadoop deployments in the world to Google Cloud. As Spark usage has grown, we have been focused on delivering the best Spark experience on Google Cloud. Dataproc, as a processing engine, gives customers a managed cloud experience, but without having to re-architect applications and code. It also provides deep integration with the rest of Google Cloud, making it easy to mix open source solutions alongside native Google Cloud services. Dataproc combines the best of open source and cloud because it's a fully managed and highly scalable service for running Apache Spark, Apache Flink, Presto, and over 30 open source tools and frameworks. Use Dataproc for data lake modernization, ETL, and secure data science at planet scale, fully integrated with Google Cloud, and at a fraction of the cost. Cloud Dataproc Vision Dataproc is fast. Without using Dataproc, it can take from 5 to 30 minutes to create Spark and Hadoop clusters on-premises or through infrastructure as a service providers. It is easy. You don't need an administrator or any special software to use Dataproc because you can easily interact with clusters and Spark or Hadoop jobs through the Google Cloud Console, the Cloud SDK, or the Dataproc REST API. It is cost-effective. Dataproc charges you only for what you really use with second-by-second -second billing and a low one-minute minimum billing period. In a nutshell, fast, easy to use, fully managed cloud service for running Spark and Hadoop clusters in a simpler, more cost-efficient way to make your deployments a success. This is how a typical deployment on-premises using Spark and Hadoop looks like. As you can see, this deployment has multiple steps that require a lot of work and effort and are not elastic, are hard to scale fast, have capacity limits, and there is no separation between storage and compute resources. On the other hand, a typical Dataproc deployment is much simpler and it's only a three-step process that can easily be performed by one person. Creating the cluster takes no time, Configuring it takes around 20 seconds and your cluster is ready to be used in 90 seconds. Using Cloud Dataproc and Google Cloud Tools can save you time, money, and effort because adopting a cloud-based approach can make your overall solution simpler and easy to manage. Cloud Dataproc provides built-in support for Hadoop, manage hardware and configuration, simplify version management, and flexible job configuration. As you can see on screen, when you're running an Apache Hadoop cluster on-premises, you have many options available in Google Cloud in order to satisfy all of your needs. For example, in the yellow square for processing streaming data, if you use Apache Spark or Kafka, we recommend you use Cloud Dataproc, while if you use Apache Beam, we recommend Cloud Dataflow. There are other three different scenarios in this slide to help you make an informed decision of which products to use and when. Today, Spark developers spend only a portion of their time writing code, and the rest of the time goes to planning, provisioning, and managing infrastructure. 
This stems from the fact that while being a very powerful distributed processing framework, Spark is also very complicated, with lots of parameters and knobs to tune. At Google Cloud, we are on a mission to give developers their time back, eliminating the need to worry about infrastructure at all. Our serverless Spark offering is the industry's first auto-scaling offering for all workloads. You write the code and submit the job, we take care of everything else, from figuring out the best default configuration, to auto-scaling, and to optimizing infrastructure usage. Unlike other solutions where you end up paying for the infrastructure time, with serverless Spark, you only pay for the job duration, period. On top of providing the API to submit your Spark jobs, we have integrated the serverless Spark offering with some other leading Google Cloud products. Let's take a look at some of those integrations. Spark through BigQuery. The first major integration is Spark on BigQuery, giving BigQuery users an integrated SQL and Spark experience right from the BigQuery console. We have integrated a PySpark editor into the BigQuery console powered by the serverless Spark backend. Now, your analysts and data scientists can write and submit PySpark code against BigQuery data, all with the same serverless auto-scaling experience as they're used to with SQL. Serverless Spark through Vertex AI. For organizations looking to use Spark for data science and machine learning, we have integrated serverless Spark with Vertex AI our unified AI platform. Data scientists no longer need to go through custom integrations to use Spark with their notebooks. Through Vertex AI Workbench, they can connect to Spark with a single click and do interactive development. With Vertex AI, Spark can easily be used together with other ML frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and BigQuery ML. All the Google Cloud security, compliance, and IAM are automatically applied across Vertex AI and Spark. Once you're ready to deploy the ML models, the knock boot can be executed as a Spark job in Dataproc and scheduled as part of AI pipelines. All the Google Cloud security, compliance, and IAM are automatically applied across Vertex AI and Spark. Once you're ready to deploy the ML models, the notebook can be executed as a Spark job in Dataproc and scheduled as part of AI pipelines. Spark through Dataplex. For those looking to build a unified platform across distributed data, Dataplex provides unified security and governance, intelligent data management, and integrated analytics experience. And now we are integrating serverless Spark with Dataplex out of the gate giving you the ability to run Spark across all of your data with unified security and permissions. At the same time, your analysts and data scientists get access to turnkey, serverless, collaborative SQL and notebook environments across all your data. This demo shows how to set up and use Apache Spark and Jupyter Notebooks on Cloud Dataproc. First, open up Cloud Shell by clicking the button in the top right-hand corner of the Cloud Console. Next, enable the Dataproc, Compute Engine, and BigQuery Storage APIs using these commands. You will need to authorize Cloud Shell. Now, we will create a Google Cloud Storage bucket. Let's make sure to give it a unique name this will be used for the Dataproc cluster. Now, let's create the Dataproc cluster with Jupyter and Component Gateway. In order to do that, first, let's set the variables for the cluster, making sure to specify the bucket we created earlier. Then we will run this gcloud command to create the cluster with all the necessary components to work with Jupyter Notebooks. Now we can see the output telling us that the cluster is being created. This should take about 90 seconds. Once it is ready, we will be able to access the cluster from the Dataproc Cloud Console UI. 
create an Apache notebook. Once the cluster is ready, we can find the component gateway link to the JupyterLab web interface by clicking on the cluster we created and going to the web interfaces tab. Our next step is to create a notebook with the Python 3 kernel. In order to do that, from the Launcher tab, click on the Python 3 Notebook icon to create a notebook with the Python 3 kernel, which allows you to configure the Spark session in the notebook and include the Spark's BigQuery connector required to use the BigQuery storage API. Make sure to rename the notebook to something meaningful. In my case, to save us some time, I already imported a notebook with the code we will be using. In this notebook, you will use the Spark BigQuery connector, which is a tool for reading and writing data between BigQuery and Spark, making use of BigQuery storage API. Now, let's run our Spark code in the notebook. First, we will import packages and make sure to use the proper dependencies. After that, we will create a Spark session and include the Spark BigQuery connector package. Now, let's enable REPL Eager Evo. This will output the results of data frames in each step, and it will also improve the formatting of the output. Now, let's read a BigQuery table into a Spark data frame. Here, we are creating a Spark data frame by reading in data from a public BigQuery dataset, the Wikipedia page views. This makes use of the Spark BigQuery connector and BigQuery storage API to load the data into the Spark cluster. Next, we will select the required columns and apply a filter using WHERE, which is an alias for filter. When this code is run, it triggers a Spark action and the data is read from BigQuery storage at this point. Now, let's group by title and let's also order by page views to see the top pages. And this is our outcome. We have successfully read BigQuery public data sets and have listed the top Wikipedia pages in a Spark data frame. Let's look at the architecture of Dataproc Serverless for Spark. Serverless Spark automates the provisioning and auto-scaling of the infrastructure. Users submit Spark code and can provide Spark properties for any customizations. Each Spark executor maps to an abstract unit called Data Compute Unit. Data Compute Unit represents one Dataproc vCPU plus 4 GB of RAM. Billing is only for the duration the job runs. Serverless Spark works with both BigQuery and Cloud Storage. Users can attach a persistent history server to view Spark logs after the job is finished and a Hive Met Store as well. Once the job finishes, everything is cleaned up except the logs and persisted results. Now, let's talk about one of our customers and how Dataproc has allowed them to reduce processing times while reducing cost. Power of Data works with big data and analytic solutions, using technology to automate and accelerate the entire data chain process for companies seeking to significantly improve results. The company handles data storage and deployment elements in cloud storage and uses several Google Cloud solutions to refine its services even further. For instance, they use Dataproc. Bruno Harding, the CTO of Power of Data, told us that the main benefit came from using Dataproc, which helped Power of Data reduce processing times by 94%. One of their customers, a retailer whose processing time was 17 hours, is now just 30 minutes. This is a significant difference that translates into time and cost savings. 
In this session, we'll learn more about Google Cloud Dataproc and how it's integrated with other open source tools and Google Cloud solutions. In the demo, we'll learn how to use Apache Spark and Jupyter Notebooks on Cloud Dataproc. We also reviewed the Dataproc serverless for Spark architecture, and we'll learn how Power of Data is using Cloud Dataproc. If you want to find out more, click the links in the description where you'll be able to read more about Cloud Dataproc, try out the hands-on step-by-step guides, use our ready-to-use templates, reach out and get connected. Today's video focuses on Google Cloud's fully managed service for running Apache Spark and Apache Hadoop clusters. We explore what it is, how it works, and how it compares to on-premises deployments. In the demo, we show you how to quickly set up and use Apache Spark and Jupyter Notebooks on Cloud Dataproc. Please refer to the links in the description box to get additional resources. Be on the lookout for our next video, where we will explore what Dataflow can bring to your business, how to start using it, how to design, scale, and optimize with Dataflow, and you will also learn how to build stream data pipelines in Dataflow. And that's a wrap. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell icon to get notified each time a new video is posted. Stay tuned and we will see you very soon in the next video.